Gabby, I greatly appreciate your reply and I was very surprised that it arrived so soon. My guess would be that you are swamped with emails on a daily basis, especially as your channel continues to grow. I read your, I read your email several times. You gave me more than a few things to think about which had not occurred to me. I was aware that I really had sorted, hadn't sorted out my own feelings. Guys aren't as good as the at this. Dang on it. I was aware that I really hadn't sorted out my own feelings. Guys aren't as good at this as women are, so, or so the psychology texts say. But not being good at it was no excuse to avoid sorting them. It took me several days to actually start to separate thoughts from feelings. In the interim, I continued to see my fiance. She has been quite understanding. I talked I took your advice and talked to her on our next date. As you suggested, I assured the shaved head isn't a deal breaker and it it is her love, not ha her that I love, not hair. I explained my total lack of experience with something like this and was trying to sort it all out and needed to ask some questions. <clears throat> I asked for the questions you suggested as if it was a cleansing such as if it was a cleansing renewal thing did it have something to do with thick hair and being hot and not comfortable for her she said it wasn't about thick hair or how hot it was in fact she pointed out that once her head was shaved she would be wearing wigs in most public situations and she learned that wigs can be quite hot, even over a shaved head. When I asked her about it being sort of renewal or cleansing ritual, she got pensive for a bit and said that she had never really looked at it that way. But in many ways, did feel renewed, cleansed, starting over, and the like from the time she did it before. She first shaved her head right after moving out on her own to attend college. She had wanted to do it for a long time and somehow this starting a new part of her life on her own seemed to go hand in hand with it. But that wasn't her reason for shaving her head. More of a benefit she felt after doing it. The second time she shaved her head was right after she finished college and was going on to graduate school. She would be moving out of state for the first time away from her family and friends, so it was also a second new start. Again, she said that it wasn't a reason, it, that it wasn't the reason she did it, more of a benefit from doing it. So I was about to ask her what then motivated her to shave her head when I realized that question was too general. A lot of people never analyze what motivates them, so I broke it down into simpler and more direct questions. What things or incidents led her to start fantasizing about shaving her head? Good question. She smiled and got really sort of bright-eyed and wide-eyed with excitement. And she told me that when she was younger, in her junior high days, 
She stayed up one weekend during the summer watching late night movies on television. Then she told me about a movie she had seen that night starring Zsa Zsa Gabor. And in the movie, a young woman with very long hair was chosen by Stalin from a line of young girls with long hair to have her head shaved bald as some sort of punishment. She went on to describe the scene <clears throat> as barbers cut her hair with scissors, then used manual clippers to clip it short, then put shaving cream on her head and shaved her bald with a straight razor. She described how others in the room in the scene were all looking intently with deep curiosity and seemed to be becoming sexually aroused by the shaving of the girl's head. She said as the girl lost more and more of her hair that she, my fiance, became more and more aroused. Her exact words were, I was so wet I felt like I was sitting in a puddle. Well, then when they began to use the razor to shave her completely bald, she said she was so horny that she had to start masturbating. When they finished shaving the girl's head and showered her, um, <laughs> complete. <clears throat> when they finished shaving the girl's head and showered her completely bald in the center of the room, she said she had um, reached the point of no return. Um. Yeah, reach the point of no return, we'll go with that. Um, that she had reached the, never reached that point of no return harder in her life. So yeah. <laughs> um, and as that scene finished, Zsa Zsa, who was playing some sort of nurse and was watching it all, seemed aroused and she reached up and pulled off this sort of veil she was wearing as part of her nurse uniform. My fiance described described it like Zsa, Zsa had ripped off a wig and my fiance said at that moment she felt not only did she need to be bald but that she had to see Zsa, Zsa bald as well. She went on to give a brief narrative after of the movie after that which she found quite dull but masturbated and came several more times before just reliving the scene in her mind. And the twin sister who was looking finally found Zsa, Zsa and Stalin who had faked his death and was living disguised by plastic surgery. The nurse sister had apparently been brainwashed by Stalin's people and she got into a fight with her sister, during which the sister pulled her wig off the nurse's head, revealing her completely bald. My fiance at that point said that she reached the point of no return so hard without masturbating. After that, she began a long history of creating fantasies where her head was shaved bald, which she used to arouse herself during masturbation. Over time, she added shaving the rest of her body, face, eyebrows, female parts, and total body hairlessness, leaving only the eyelashes. She relayed one fantasy to me in which she was bound to a bed by all four limbs. She was gagged so she couldn't speak or scream and one at a time the number of males and females came into the room and each did the devil's tango with her until she reached the point of no return, and then when they left, they took scissors and snipped off a lock of her, of either her lady part area hair or the hair on her head until it was all cut off. 
Then several women dressed as nurses came back in and took razors and shaved her head, lady area, and entire body, including her eyebrows. And once she was hairless, they each took turns using a strap on her to until she reached the point of no return. And then the woman who had just finished using the strap on on her would move to my fiance's head and straddle her and my fiance would give her oral devil's tango while the next woman came in and began using the strap on on her. This was repeated until all the women had done so and had received oral from her. Then the woman released her from the bonds on the bed and fastened new bonds on her and left her kneeling with her hands behind her. And w one at a time, the men would come in and she would give a oral on the men. And when they came, they pulled out of her mouth and came on her face and bald head. Then rubbed that into her skin. It was repeated until all of the men had their turn and had reached the point of no return on her. She told me a few other shaved and bald related fantasies she had and one was that on her wedding night her husband would make her his forever by first talk, taking all of her hair then by taking her, and her hairlessness would be a sign of her commitment to her husband forever. I believe after that I understood her motivation and how her fantasies came about. She sexualized what she saw on TV in that movie and reinforced it with a pleasure of masturbation and orgasm. To be honest, I had reached the conclusion that my ill feelings about shaving her bald came from my upbringing. I was raised to have high respect for women. Both my father <clears throat> and maternal grandfather toler tolerated anyone showing disrespect to a woman, especially one's wife. The only concept of shaving a woman's head that I had viewed it as something punitive, demeaning, demoralizing, and humiliating to a woman and I could not understand why she would want to be treated that way. Okay, we're gonna pause for a second here. I then asked her what, if any, pleasure did the baldness and remaining bald for a period of time provide her with. She admitted that at first, when it was only in a fantasy stage, she often thought that once she shaved her head, she would remain shaved for a good period of time, possibly forever. But since it was only a fantasy, she didn't initially try to analyze her feelings with the matter. With time, she said that she came to associate the bald head and body as very feminine, that women shave their legs, armpits, and sometimes arms and other body parts to appear more feminine. That hairless and smooth to her gives her a strong sense of femininity. She likes the naughtiness of the whole idea the hidden secret. She is hairless, but hides it under a wig and drawn in eyebrows. The dual identity. A normal woman on the outside to the world, but in secret with her lover, she has a shaven sexual fireball who throws away all caution and dares to go where others will not. When she was bald, she loved the naughtiness of revealing her bald head to a lover, either male or female pulling off her wig in the process of taking off her clothes for the devil's tango, revealing her total softness, femininity, and like she has a large sign around her neck 
that reads, No limits, I'm yours. Do it with me what you will. So I've been trying to hold, to get a hold of something in those explanations. I know fetishes are generally things or actions not necessarily considered to be sexual or sexually related that the person with the fetish has attached sexual connotation to. I have certainly accom accommodated fetish or paraphilia desires when expressed to me by previous partners, but of my own, I have never actually told anyone about my own. If the lady was desirous of it, I certainly was happy to accommodate her. I had been with a couple of partners who were smokers and who expressed a desire to smoke during the devil's tango, give smoky kisses, smoky oral, etc. And if I, and I of course, complied and enjoyed and expressed my enjoyment, but did not reveal that I had the fetish. driving back and forth with a motorcycle. Okay. But I didn't reveal I had. I suppose my concept of fetishes is enjoy if you find someone else into it. If not, keep it to yourself. The idea of hounding a woman into some tango act to me is extremely disrespectful. If she likes it and wants to do it, fine. Otherwise, I enjoy what she offers. I just don't believe in sexual blackmail, coercion, hounding someone to the point that they give in just to shut you up, and so on. I find all of that very disrespectful. Hmm. Now if they ask, that is something else. If a woman were to ask me if I like giving women oral, I would certainly tell her that I enjoyed it greatly or any other tango act. I've had a few ladies as partners who were a bit on the silent side about their desires. I've always done my best to discuss it with them, wanting to know both their desires and their limits. My fiance seems to enjoy our frank discussions about the tango and everything else in our impending marriage seems to appreciate the fact that I give her ideas and desires serious consideration and try to never overrule her. I honestly see marriage as a situation in which my partner's needs and desires override my own. I want to make her happy and feel appreciated. It makes me happy to make her happy. I believe in experimentation in communication, in being assured of my partner's satisfaction and pleasure and deep intimacy. I have no problem with some things being kept behind closed doors and try to be realistic about each of us marching to a different drummer and differences are not necessarily bad. I presume women have fantasies, desires, fetishes, and deep secrets. I know most men have all of these, and women I have had relationships with all certainly had them, <clears throat> whether or not they chose to express them to me up front or not. In our culture, the tango is the taboo that we all love to talk about and do, and keeping it in the taboo domain seems to be a lot of the excitement of tango in our culture. Or as my fiancé says, naughty is very erotic. I think I can deal with it now that I understand that it gives her deep pleasure and not punishment, degrading, or humiliation. I know there are people who, with those fetishes, and I suppose I could go along with it to a point, provide it was something that turned them on and not taken as a real intentional degradation and humiliation. Thanks, Abby. You're a real peach. The guy who caught you is one lucky fellow. 
enjoyed the vacation pics and the new videos on paraphilia and reaction to your exhale video. All right. Well, thank you for writing in with your follow-up. I do appreciate that. And my smoke went out. It's always nice to hear how things turn out for people. Um, wow, like for real, this doesn't want to light up. Um, I appreciate you following up with us and letting us know how things went. I'm glad that it was, um, things went well for you and you have a better understanding. Um, my concern though is I know you said you wanted to be respectful and put your partner's needs, um, ahead of your own, which really you should, um, to a point. Um, but don't do that so much that you neglect your own feelings and you're not getting what you want. You, my opinion is that of a relationship needs to be a give and take. Um, yeah, if you're willing to, you know, concede to her way of doing things and wanting her desires, um, you need to make sure your desires and fantasies are being fulfilled as well. Um, don't sell yourself short um, because what you're putting into your marriage and your relationship, um, you should be getting out of it as well. So don't forget that. Don't push yourself to the total side because then you'll get used and abused and thrown away. Um, anyway. That is all I have for you guys today. I got a super long ash, a yucky filter for you all, for those that like to look at the filter. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.